Or, we're witnessing an unprecedented pace of change, the rise of wireless technology in our lives. We're also starting to witness a rise in a broad range of illnesses and conditions that could all be related to wireless technology. Prevent Cancer Now is a national organization that educates Canadians about reducing our exposure to the things we know can cause cancer. The group is made up of doctors and scientists and others who identify potential contributors to cancer, identify alternatives that may be safer, and work to improve decision making to achieve least toxic options. They have advised all levels of government across the country about these kinds of issues. The chair of Prevent Cancer Now, Meg Sears, is our next speaker. Dr. Sears holds a PhD in biochemical engineering. She is associated with the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute. She has also been a scientific advisor to the Canadian Human Rights Commission, the National Research Council, and other government bodies. She's here today to speak about identifying a safer approach to communications technology. Dr. Sears. Thank you very much, Frank. So I'm a scientist, and some of my colleagues in the United States and around the world are describing 5G as a giant human experiment. I have to disagree. We have no evidence up front that this novel technology is safe. But think about it for a minute. If 5G rollout with millimeter wave radiation was indeed a modern scientific experiment, what would that look like? First, we would have a justifiable hypothesis. We would have reason to believe that there would be no adverse effect. All research requires ethical approval, informed consent from all participants. For an experiment, a portion of the population would have to be unexposed for control purposes. Where are we going to find that in 2019? We would certainly conduct what we call an interim analysis to halt the experiment at the very first sign that there was a problem. And finally, analyses and results would be reported publicly for discussion and implementation of logical next steps. None of this is happening. At the same time, increases in use of personal wireless devices are concurrent with a rise in brain tumors that are associated with um, cell phones. This most aggressive type of brain tumor is increasing in young Americans and it has outpaced leukemia and testicular cancer. We're seeing changes, so this is accelerating. Male infertility is also on the rise. While we learn that sperm and testes are harmed by cell phones in pockets and laptops on laps. Wireless radiation affects prenatal development in animals and in humans. Just as we are witnessing rapid increases in diagnoses of developmental disorders such as autism spectrum. Children are much more vulnerable, but we allow widespread use of Wi-Fi and wireless devices in their schools, even in junior kindergarten. Wireless radiation can affect basic biochemistry and affect many organs. But we don't have adequate data to make all of these connections scientifically. And without the data, science can't keep up with what's happening. The bottom line in Canada is that it takes decades for any new substance or technology to cause enough harm that it's finally proven dangerous and eventually is curtailed. It's so much wiser just to make less toxic, least toxic choices, to use less hazardous practices. And we can do that. Our recommendation is to invest in fiber optic cables, known technology, through communities within buildings across Canada. Fiber is already rolling out as a backbone of communications through Canadian centres, but it's not extending always to the fingers and the toes, and that's what we need. Communications via fiber is at least as rapid, it is secure, it's reliable and it's harmless compared with, with the wireless radiation. 
What's more, signals through wire or fiber require much less energy. Powering 5G technology is projected to be a major contributor to greenhouse gases at a time when the national imperative is to reduce these gases to blunt climate chaos. We have enough evidence that this unprecedented technology has potential for unprecedented impacts on our health. 5G is not an ethical scientific experiment. But if it was an, an experiment, our hypothesis, our theory, would be that it would most likely cause significant stress on public and environmental health in Ontario. We definitely can communicate better and more safely with largely fiber-based technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sears. As you can see, this is a public health warning that we take very seriously. Ontario doctors are already counting the sick and injured from exposure to wireless devices. Despite all this current science, clinical observations and evidence, Public Health Ontario has not updated its approach to wireless radiation in nine years. This is the terrain on which 5G is coming. The public is getting sick and the government is not up to date with the science. I'm not aware of any attempt by my or related industries to establish the safety of upcoming or even current wireless products. They simply state that they meet federal safety guidelines, which I now understand are over 40 years out of date. I concur with Dr. Sears that we can do a lot better. There are scientists in 42 countries, including Canada, warning about 5G. The doctors and scientists here today are not alone. Some municipal jurisdictions in Belgium and Italy have placed a moratorium on 5G. This week, the global inf insurance underwriter Swiss Re published its annual forecast and highlighted 5G as an upcoming insurable health concern globally in the next three years. This health crisis is avoidable because there are alternatives to wireless that are faster, more secure, more reliable, and much safer. Today we are recommending a four-step path to a safer future. Our first recommendation is that to the fullest extent possible, faster internet communication be built with fiber optic wiring into and throughout buildings. We also recommend that if wireless 5G is built in our neighborhoods, the appropriate government ministries commit to early detection of any health effects. This can be done by monitoring and reporting through public health agencies, giving a special consideration to children who are the most vulnerable. Our third recommendation is that the Ministry of Health begin discussions with doctors who are already assessing and th treating illnesses related to wireless exposure. Plans should be developed to educate family physicians across the province so they can identify the condition and help their patients. Our fourth and final recommendation is that the, Min the Ontario Ministry of Health and the Ontario Ministry of the Environment manage independent safety testing on wireless 5G before it is allowed to be installed in Toronto or anywhere else in the province. If Toronto is to be an early adopter of 5G, then Toronto will also be the location where illnesses first begin to rise. It would be fiscally responsible for the province to consider that all companies applying to install 5G infrastructure also be obliged to pay for any measurable increase in the cost of health care in Ontario, especially if they first can't guarantee its safety. Since the province has to pay for health care, it has a right to demand this technology be properly tested for safety. It also has an obligation to protect people anywhere in Ontario. Today we are joining the hundreds of scientists and doctors from dozens of countries who say there, enough, there is enough evidence to predict a rise in illness and a rise in health care costs if we allow 5G to be rolled out without question. A copy of today's proceedings along with scientific citations is being sent to the Office of the Premier, the Minister of Health, Finance and Environment. Finally, in anticipation of the Medical Symposium tomorrow at Women's College Hospital, some of their patients who have attended today to provide a window into how they live with the effects of microwave radiation.
These individuals are the proverbial canaries in the coal mine. The more sensitive among us whose symptoms emerged during the first round of cell towers and Wi-Fi. David Fancy is a professor in the Department of Drama at Brock University in St. Catharines, Ontario. Melissa Chalmers is a commercial airline pilot who has been off work for several years after being injured by microwave radiation from t cell towers behind her home. They have come here today in case anyone wants to speak directly to someone who is living with the long-term effects of electromagnetic injury. They and others who suffer from the effects of wireless radiation will also be at the symposium tomorrow and members of the medium are very welcome to attend. It is at Women's College Hospital just across the street at 76 Granville. It begins at 8 a.m. and runs for the day. For the benefit of medical practitioners, the event will be live streamed via the OTN the Ontario Telemedicine Network at OTN.ca so they can learn more about how to identify EMF susceptible individuals and manage their care properly. I thank the doctors and scientists who came to speak to all of us today and I thank you for coming and listening.